Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United could demand four players as part of Paul Pogba swap deal with PSG. The four players are Neymar, Kim Pempe, Kylian Mbappe and Marco Verratti. Man United have set the Paul Popper asking price. It's fifty one million pounds. Julian Lawn said that PSG are considering a move for Pogba. PSG have stepped up their interest. Fabrizio Romano did say not so long ago that PSG are interested in signing Paul Pogba. PSG have already made contact with Paul Pogba's representatives. Not so long ago, Minio Riola, who's Pogba's agent, held talks with PSG's president. Kim Pempe did say at one point that Pogba would be welcome to PSG. Pogba has had a long-running transfer saga. Um, he hasn't only been linked with PSG, he's been linked with Real Madrid. He's been linked with his former club, Juventus. And he's been linked with Barcelona and Inter Milan before. Uh, swap deals have been on the agenda. Uh, the other week there was talks of a Varane and Pogba swap deal. I don't think that swap deal is going to materialise. And there has been talks of a Cristiano Ronaldo and Paul Pogba swap deal. I hope he stays with Man United. The next season because he's an imperative player and he produced good performances in the last couple of months of last season at one point last season Popper was out with a thigh injury for a while and he sustained ankle injuries at Man United I also thought Popper enjoyed a very good tournament with France Popper did say he has more freedom with France than Man United. That's obviously when France was still in the tournament. Pogba's current contract expires next year. Because last season we triggered that one year extension on his contract. Sky Sports News said not so long ago that Man United were in ongoing talks with Pogba's representatives over a new contract. He said we wanted to make Pogba the Premier League's highest paid player with a new five-year contract worth £104 million. He said we fear losing Pogba on a free transfer next year. Minio Riola has obviously been desperate to get Popper out of the club. Um, he did a lot of talking last season. Back in December last year, Minio Riola made an announcement. He said that Paul Popper's career at Man United is over. He said he was unhappy and he has to leave. And he said he had no intentions of extending his contract with Man United and Solskjaer was furious with Minio Riola's announcement because it was just before the game against RB Leipzig in the Champions League. He 
He also said last season that he had no intentions of destabilising his client's season and he made an admission saying that he was working quietly on Paul Popper's transfer. He also came out and said he doesn't give a fuck if he doesn't take another play to Man United as long as his clients are happy. And he criticised Sir Alex Ferguson for forcing Popper out of the club when he was younger. And he did say towards the end of last season that Popper wants to win trophies at Man United or at another top European club. He did say that his future was in doubt. Pogba's endured five seasons at Man United since he rejoined. He's our most expensive sign at the moment because we paid £89 million for him. He's won three trophies at the club so far. That's the Europa League, the League Cup and the Community Shield. Now, I want to delve into some news on Raphael Varane. So... According to AS, Man United are very close to signing Raphael Varane. Raphael Varane could be signed for a fee in the region of £40 to £50 million. Pound. Raphael Varane wants a switch to Man United, is refused PSG. Says Man United are 12 million short of Raphael Varane's valuation. It recently said Man United get the green light for Varane. Because Real Madrid have given Varane permission to negotiate a departure out of the club. Varane has agreed personal terms with Manchester United. Said we offered him a contract worth €12 million. Euros. Varane wants his move sorted within the next two weeks. Fabrizio Romano said that Man United still awaiting Real Madrid's response on the Rafael Varane approach. And he said that Man United have had direct contact tact with Real Madrid regarding Varane and both clubs still remain in talks over the defender. Real Madrid offered Varane a renewal contract offer but Varane rejected it. Varane's current contract at Real Madrid expires next year. We went in for Varane 10 years ago under the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Varane has been a long-serving player at Real Madrid. He's been with them over 10 years. He's made 360 appearances in all competitions. He's won 18 major honours, so he's got a good pedigree as a player. Real Madrid got Varane from Lens back in 2011. He is regarded as one of the best centre-halves in the world. So, there's a very, very good chance that Varane is going to be our third signing of this summer transfer window. Uh, you already know the news on Eduardo Camavinga from Rennes. Uh, Fabrizio Romano said that Man United were expected to make a bid in the coming days. Uh, Man United are serious about Camavinga. And he said that Man United are the front runners for Camavinga. 
Uh, negotiations are still ongoing between Renz and Man United for Camavinga. It said uh, a couple of days ago, was it, that Renz had made a bid of just over £8.4 million for Midgillan midfielder Jens Kajusti as a potential replacement for Camavinga. Romano mentioned not so long ago that Man United progressed direct contact for Camavinga. And he says Renza open to selling him for twenty five point seven million. Man United also want Declan Rice from West Ham. So far, Man United have made two signings in this summer transfer window. We've got Tom Heaton in on a three transfer from Aston Villa, and we've got Jaden Sancho in from Borussia. Dortmund. I'm expecting Manchester United to endure a very good summer transfer window because I am convinced that Solskjaer is going to get all the players he wants to recommend in. And it's about time Solskjaer got the backing he deserves because he wasn't backed enough for such a long time. I think Solskjaer's made it clear that he wants Manchester United to make four signings. Obviously, Solskjaer's ambition for next season is to win the Premier League title. We haven't won the Premier League since 2013, which is eight years ago now. And obviously, next season is going to be massive for Solskjaer. I think he is aware of that. This summer transfer window is Solskjaer's fifth transfer window as permanent Man United manager. But our board did say that they'll back Solskjaer with summer signings and a new three-year contract, despite the Europa League final loss to Villarreal last season. And before the summer transfer window opened, it said Solskjaer had been given a £150 million transfer budget to buy around four or five new players. Uh, Man United are going to be generating money because we're going to be offloading players in this summer transfer window. There's still some deadwood at the club. Um, De Gea could possibly leave. I don't think he will. I think he will remain at Man United for next season. Uh, De Gea will hold talks with Solskjaer over his future after the Euros. ESPN said that De Gea is unsure on Solskjaer's final decision. Now, De Gea, he said De Gea could be loaned out for next season by Man United to make room in the goalkeeping department. But De Gea said he's determined to fight for his future. And not so long ago, he said he's convinced he'll stay at Man United and be Solskjaer's number one for next season. I still rate De Gea, despite him making quite a lot of mistakes in the last couple of years. You know, a few years ago, De Gea was regarded as the best goalkeeper in the world. He's been a long serving at Man United, he's enjoyed 10 years at the club. He's had eight good years out of the ten years he's been here. But De Gea's won everything domestically at the football club and he's made over 500 appearances for us in all competitions and he was our number one for such a long time. De Gea's got two years left on his current contract. He's on £375,000 a week. Uh, Brandon Williams um, looks like he's going to Southampton on loan. It's the right decision to put him out on loan to gain him more experience and to get a lot more opportunities because Williams seldom plays for us. He's our third choice left back. Last season, Williams made just 14 appearances 
Uh, only five of them were starts. And in the 2019-20 season, he made 36 appearances. He played a lot of games in the 2019-20 season. That's only because Luke Shaw had a couple of periods out with injury. Phil Jones, uh, we need to offload him in this summer transfer window because he's always been inconsistent. He doesn't get in our 11. And he was out of injury for a while. Phil Jones is the only outfield player that's still with us from the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Jones has been long serving player. He's enjoyed 10 years now at Manchester United. Uh, two hands ever is going out on loan, isn't he? Uh, I think Diego Delo is leaving. He was out on loan with AC Milan. Uh, we're looking to get rid of Andres Pereira permanently. He was out on loan with Lazio. Pobba could be leaving. Um, I'm expecting Man United to offload Donny van der Beek. Uh, Donny van der Beek has only endured one full season at Man United. He's made, what, 36 appearances for us in all competitions. Most of them appearances came from the bench. So quite clearly he is unhappy. Now, there's been a few clubs in for Van der Beek. It said not so long ago that Real Madrid wanted Van der Beek on loan as part of the Varane deal. Inter Milan wanted him on loan not so long ago. Van der Beek did say that he wanted to go to Barcelona to end his Man United misery. Arsenal made contact with Man United regarding Donny Van der Beek. Before the Euros, though, it said that Van der Beek was set for showdown talks with Solskjaer over his future. And don't forget, Van der Beek got ruled out of the Euros through injury. I think we want £25 million if we are to sell Van der Beek, around £2 million if we are to loan him out. We got Van der Beek in a deal worth £40 million from Ajax last year. He's under contract with Man United till 2025. I think there's an option of a further year. And he's versatile, he can play in three different roles. I heard rumours as well that Daniel James could leave Man United in this summer transfer window. But there's a lot of players that are going to stay at Manchester United and I reckon there's quite a few players that have got long-term futures at the club. Um, I think Dean Henderson will stay at Manchester United, even though it said his future was in doubt with obviously Tom Heaton's arrival. Uh, not so long ago, Solskjaer said he's chose Dean Henderson to be our number one goalkeeper for next season. It's the right decision, because Dean Henderson is now reliable. Um, he did well in a lot of the games he was in goal for last season. Henderson... Has got that experience behind him. He endured two successful loans at Sheffield United. He's also had other loan spells before. Before the start of last season, Dean Henderson signed a six-year contract with the club. So reflecting on that, he committed his future to Man United. Uh, Luke Shaw, he'll definitely stay with Man United for next season. Luke Shaw's really, really improved. He was our best player last season. Towards the end of last season, though, for like three games in a row, he did look off the pace. Luke Shaw still remains our first choice left back, despite the arrival of Alex Tellez. And Shaw's had a good career at Man United despite his injuries. He's been at the club now for over seven years. Uh, Alex Tellez, um, I think he'll probably stay with us for next season. At one point there was rumours of him leaving, I haven't, I haven't heard all recently though. Uh, Tellez has hardly played for Man United. Uh, when we got Tellez last year, I expected him to be our first choice left back immediately. We got Tellez in a deal worth £15.4 from Porto. 
Uh, Harry Maguire, obviously he'll stay at Man United for next season. I don't know if, about long term though. Harry Maguire is a decent centre half, but you know we did overpay for him. We got him in a deal worth eighty million from Leicester. He's the most expensive centre half in the world at the moment, and he's the second most expensive sign at the club behind Paul Pogba. Uh, Eric Bay, he will remain with us. Uh, towards the end of last season, Eric Bay signed a new contract with Man United until 2024. There's an option of a further year. Probably was a mistake giving that new contract. But Bay is a decent centre half. My element of concern about Eric Bay is injury prone, so in that aspect, he is a liability. Bay's been at the club now for over five years. We got him for 30 million from Villarreal back in 2016. Uh, Victor Lindelof, I think he will he will remain at Man United for next season, but I can assure. He hasn't got a long-term future with Man United. I've got my reservations about Victor Lindelof. We got Lindelof from Benfica for around £31 million back in 2017. Uh, and Wan Bissaka, obviously, he will stay at Manchester United. I think he's got a long-term future at the club. Uh, and Wan Bissaka has really, really improved. What? Who's that? Ah, uh, Calvin? No. Gina? No. No, because Gina texted me and she said that my mum says to her enjoy it's Ah, Calvin. Yeah, she does. What's she on about here? Is that going to relate to her? I know. Drink. What are you doing? Getting a walk. Are you coming to watch game? I'm watching tonight, yeah. Alright. Emma and uh, who was it watching with this long? Can Emma's going back? What time? All right, I'm off to the pub to watch it, me. Well, are you watching it? What game? Yeah. Pub. Oh. Yeah. I will get in. What? Alright. Like I said, uh, yeah, just filling me sitting talking here, uh, yeah. But, um, Pesaka's one of the best right backs we've had since Gary Neville. Defensively, he's superb, but he's got to show more attacking intent. There was some games last season, though, where he got forward well. Pesaka's endured two full seasons at Man United. We got him in a deal worth 50 million from Palace in the summer of 2019. Um, McTominay, he'll stay with Man United as well. Um, McTominay is not yet on that level where I want him to be at. The question is, can he emulate to that level? Still young, got a lot of development in him, needs time. He's been part of the club for a long time as it stands. Just after the first lockdown last year, he signed a five-year contract with Man United. Uh, Fred, he'll stay with us, but I don't think he's going to be with us long term. Got me reservations about Fred, but Fred can put some good performances out. We overpaid for him. We got him in a deal worth fifty-two million from Shakhtar Donetsk. Uh, I've been hearing that Matic is now staying at Manchester United. I want us to offload the man, Matic, Matic, because I've got me concerns about Matic. He's always been a static player, and he's aging up. And analysing the vast majority of his games at Man United, he's been inconsistent. Just after. 
Just before the start of last season, Matic signed a three-year contract with Man United. Matic has been at Man United for over four years now. Got him for £40 million from Chelsea back in 2017. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, obviously, he will stay at Man United. Uh, Fabrizio Romano did say not so long ago that Man United are looking at a new contract for Bruno Fernandes. Um, it said towards the end of last season that Man United were looking to double Bruno Fernandes' wages to £200,000 a week. He's on £100,000 a week at the moment. Fernandez's current contract expires in 2025. There's an option of a further 12 months. We got Fernandez from Sport in Lisbon back in January 2020 in a deal worth just over £67 million. Fernandez has been with us now for like 18 months or so. In most of his games at Man United, he's been very, very consistent. But there's also been quite a few games where he's looked off the pace. But we have overplayed him. Fernandes is our best player and he's one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. He won Player of the Year last season and he's won Player of the Month quite a few times, reflecting on his good performances. So there you go. Uh, Mason Greenwood, um, I think he will remain with Manchester United. There could be a problem now with Greenwood though, with Jadon Sancho coming. Because Jadon Sancho is predominantly a right winner and Greenwood does play on the right a lot. There again you can play Greenwood central but that means Edison Cavani would have to drop out. But Greenwood's been an absolute revelation since he broke into our senior squad. Despite him going a long period without scoring, Greenwood made his senior debut in 2019. He's been a United player since the age of seven, so he's been part of the club for a long time. And last season, Greenwood signed a new four-year contract. Edison Cavani, obviously, he's staying at Man United for next season, which is good news from a Man United perspective. Uh, he's made an impact since he's come in. Fabrizio Romano did say towards the end of last season that Cavani agreed a one-year contract. Um, I think Marcus Rashford's going to be staying at Man United. There's aspects of Marcus Rashford's game that I've got to improve because Rashford has endured his bad periods. Sustained some injuries as well last season, so he's become injury-prone. We need to keep Marcus Rashford out on that left-hand side because that's where he's more effective. Rashford's been a United player since the age of seven and he's been in our senior squad since 2016. So there you go. But uh, Solskjaer, I've got my concerns about him. My two biggest concerns about Oli hasn't got a proven pedigree as a manager and his decision-making concerns me. Because in a lot of the games he's managed at Man United, he's been tactically naive. But there's quite a lot of things I've got to credit Solskjaer for as well. Um, I didn't expect Solskjaer to do as well as he has done, so in that aspect, I am shocked. You've got to say he's done a good job to say the current squad he was left with when he got appointed in as Man United manager. Because Solskjaer was inheriting a lot of deadwood. When Solskjaer got appointed in as Man United manager, he assured everybody would get their chances to express themselves, including the young players, and more or less everybody has been given their chances. Um, I like the way Solskjaer develops the youth, and when Solskjaer got appointed in as Man United manager, he knew he had a lot to do when he knew it was going to be a massive job, despite him knowing the culture of the club. I think Solskjaer's made good signings as Manchester United manager. So far, he's spent over £300 million. He's got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he's come in. In Solskjaer's first full season, he got us to three semi-finals, got us a third-place finish. In his second full season, got us to the Europa League final, the EFL Cup semi-final, the FA Cup quarter-final, got us a second-place finish last season. 
Our record away from home in the Premier League is tremendous. You know, last season went the entire season without losing away from home in the Premier League. So there you go. They are the positives. And Solskjaer is our best manager since Ferguson, despite me criticising him a lot during his managerial tenure at Man United. Solskjaer has been in charge of Man United now for almost 31 months, which is over two years. But next season, you know, I'd say Solskjaer's got to win a trophy if he is to remain Man United manager because he's not yet won a trophy and we haven't won a trophy since 2017, which is four years ago now and that's nowhere near good enough to our standards. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you for today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.